What's up, kingdom? Today we'll show you warlock build for the last epoch. But it's not your normal warlock build. Instead, this video will show you how you can make a build yourself. Still, my first tip is to follow some build guides first if you're not familiar with the game. I got nice Google spreadsheet with builds that I think is really good and easy to play and knows require a lot of gear so you can easily jumpstart with them in your adventure. But today we're going on the last epoch tools into build planner. Because there's a lot of skills in this game. But probably you see every build doing kind of same thing. So every warlock build right now is basically Fisher build that's shooting chaos bolts and some souls of it. But what if you want to play with different skills? That's actually how you can start your build. So get your notepads ready. And let's jump straight to the building of our broken warlock build. So, hardest part is actually nowhere to start. And best jump start for the build will be going into skills. So, in build planner you can pick your class, your mastery class, make sure you're on the latest version of the game and go basically to your skills over here. And because every warlock build using Fisher as main skill, I was thinking about making build with just flame or chaos bolt. So for today I picked chaos bolt. That's our first task basically. And when you're picking like your build, you want to know what you want out of your skill. So if you want to use chaos bolt as your main skill, just see what you can have with your different nodes when you're leveling it up. So for example, you can go to the top left and get mania in flames. It will give you ignite chance. Then you probably will get Call of Morditas, and this will change your fire spell to cold and ignite to frost by chance. After that you can increase freeze rate multiplier and also chill chance, so basically you can be like chill warlock, kinda leech character. And make sure to write in the comments if you want me to make this leech called warlock character built for you and drop a like. But what I want to do today with Warlock, I want to make him kind of Chaos Bolts Blaster. So Chaos Bolts, I was looking for the notes and I found this Chains of Betrayer. Instead of multiple bolts, we will have one big bolt. Yeah, one big bolt Warlock. So normally Chaos Bolts doing multiple bolts, but now we will shoot one ball. It will have more area, more damage and it will be increased for each bolt. So, how we get into this node? We get in Abrupt Chaos, and for first iteration of the build, just basically get points you need to go over there. So, two points in Abrupt Chaos, then two points in Pandemonium, and you will get Casting Speed, Projectile Speed, Chance for Increased Area, and also Ketonic Aurora. So this will like, give you extra projectiles for more mana cost. Normally Chaos Bolts costs only 10 man mana, now they will cost in 30 mana, it's really big deal. And then we finally arrive into Big Bolt, one Big Bolt. It will eat these additional projectiles, but again it will cost more mana I guess anyway. So now we got kind of base of our build. After you set up this node, just think what you need more now, maybe from this skill. And uh, I thought initially that I need some mana. So I just wrote over here in the search bar mana and now I see. All nodes highlighted in red will do something with mana. And already know that these nodes will give me less mana because it will make higher mana cost for this spell. So I'm not interested in this. And other nodes here Kind of same story, and what's here on the bottom? Chaos Bolts hits against cursed enemies, regain health and mana. So I examined other nodes, there is no actually like interesting nodes in any other tree for me, because I want to focus right now on necrotic damage, main damage for Chaos Bolts, and that's why I decided, okay, I will go with Devour the Damned. Normally, Devour the Damned uh, should restore a lot of mana, because when you're shooting these bolts, basically you shooting lots of bolts. For me, it will be less mana restoration, but at least some. And also, Seat of Chaos will give me chance to recast with lower mana cost consumption. So it's basically kind of lower mana cost Chaos Bolts, so why not? And I was left with one free point. I get Damned Chance. That's it. So we got our main skill. What now? What we do now? Now 
I totally forgot to tell you. First of all, when you pick in your Warlock, go into Passives and get 20 points in Acolyte or your main class, and then get all points in like top three of your preferred mastery class. For me, it's Warlock, so I got a lot of notes over here at first. That's uh, to unlock all skills, of course, so we can just pick whatever we like. So now what I made, like my next step was, I will definitely will have problems with mana consumption. That's why Spirit Plague is a nice idea to pick. And I found out it basically by pressing on every ability over here and trying to find out what abilities will cost like almost no mana and possibly restore my mana points. Reblood can like cost almost zero mana and at the same time they can restore my mana when I directly cast in it. So it's a nice skill to have. But because I already played a lot of Warlock with Torment Fisher, I found out that uh, you can have a Spirit Plague skill with really low mana cost, costing just 3 mana, and if you pick in this note over here just 2 times, it will already cost uh, like 0 mana for you. But at the same time, when you switch mana over here, you will find this note. Mana gain on kill. So when Spirit Plague kills an enemy, you are gaining mana, and I thought probably it will be okay for me to just spread this plague, it uh, instantly will be necrotic damage and it will regain my mana, so that's kind of theory craft part of the build. And also Spirit Plague is cursed, so it will like dramatically increase my damage with other curses. So I thought like, let me try this out, can I make something good from this node? And I instantly got two points in Pestilence, to increase global damage over time, to get Hemorrhage, to get to the next node and basically get mana on kill over here. And already these two perks, these two skills kind of flesh out our build. So we got two necrotic damage builds and also one curse. So maybe we can apply more curses and more mana. So I decided to pick Bone Curse and Wandering Spirits. So Wandering Spirits can restore mana when they revealed and expired. Bone Curse is just a really powerful curse that can cast a little cost less mana, so it's pretty useful too. And now it's time basically how to pick next skills. Next skills will be picked based on our main damage type. And that's very nice here in Build Planner you will see damage type on every skill basically. And it will be lighting up if it's already applying and it will be great out if there's no ability to use this skill like this damage type now. So for example, Wandering Spirits. Over here we see Necrotic Damage and also it's Fire. So if you go to like Necrotic Spirits, we can cast, uh, enter Fire over here and there's nothing for some reason. Oh, because it's not fire, yeah, it's poison, yeah, it's poison. So it can be necrotic or poison, but for poison you need to get this node, infectious death. Yeah, it's necrotic changed to poison. And basically my next step was uh, picking good skills with necrotic tech. And it's bone curse, it's already necrotic. Wandering spirit, it's necrotic spell and giving me mana, so basically my build kinda ready. And now last part. I already know what I will do with the spells, I basically will cast them, but because I played the game I know that I need some mobility in my build anyway, so no brainer, transplant comes online. Transplant is really nice stuff, and here you can enter necrotic and see this note, changing physical to necrotic damage, really easy stuff. And basically like that I fleshed out my build, I made every skill with necrotic damage, increasing uh, Spell Necrotic Damage per Intelligence for my Curses, getting Mana Efficiency, Mana Regeneration by every node I can, and also I change in main damage type for Bone Curse, because Bone Curse normally is physical damage, so we're going to the bottom, increasing area, making this curse ability to cast Mark of Dash to increase our damage, also increasing duration, and also changing damage with Misery. So, build is kinda ready. Now, <laughs> what do we do now? Now we're going back to the passives and going into like each tree over here and thinking what we need. But to understand what we need, we need to understand what our skills is uh, scaling with. So to see scaling factors, you just hover over your skill and you will see scaling tags. 
So Marrow Shards, for example, will scale with Spell, Physical and Intelligence. So Physical Damage, Earned Other Physical Stuff, Penetration, Spell Damage and Intelligence. And you need to pick most common text for all your spells. For me, it's basically Spell Damage, Necrotic Damage. I can get a little bit of uh, damage every time, but mostly I'm casting Curses with Necrotic, Spell Damage that's scaling with Intelligence. So we're going into Passives and now deciding what we want in the first tree in the Collide. Do we need a lot of stuff over here or not? And I decided that we can pick Blood Aura to increase damage, then plus 8 Intelligence from Forbidden Knowledge, and then we need at least 4 points just to get to Warlock. So 4 points in Vitality to increase our Vitality, basically. There is no better notes over here here most of them for just like minions and then i decided later we can pick this node to increase necrotic damage and damned chance then before going into your main node into your mastered warlock for example for me check out other nodes for necromancer and lich and do you want to invest in any early nodes so lich got intelligence and mana regeneration and again i found it like this i just entered mana regeneration mana rec and i found nodes that give me intelligence and mana re regeneration really cool there is no nodes like this in necromancer so we don't need Necromancer, and then we're going to Warlock. And in Warlock again, I'm entering Mana Regeneration, instantly finding it, and I got increased Mana Regeneration, and also, per every curse on enemy, I'm gaining chance for restoring Mana on hit, just what I need. Then I'm changing this to Necrotic Damage, basically, so Necrotic, and leveling everything that got Necrotic Tech. So this increase in Necrotic Damage, this rune will do some stuff with damped chance and increasing necrotic damage. This rune increasing necrotic damage and also sp spamming which fire on my enemies. And basically that's what I'm finished with. Basically nodes that got intelligence and a little bit of health leech against cursed enemies. I got this uh, witch fire domain that increases damage of witch fire. And then I got a little bit of points left, so... You just need to see what is good protective nodes. Most of the time they on the bottom. So there's five points in armor to increase armor health and more armor per curse on target. We're using curses. It's really useful and other stuff. And that's basically kind of finishing out our skills and passive build. Now we need to figure out, can we actually make this character work? And now it's kind time of items how to find good items for a build because if you're going into item selection there will be like tons of items and of course if you played already last epoch you know that you need prefixes affixes suffixes and other stuff with a lot of weapons armors how to find what you want right now it's a lot easier because we kind of know what we need first of all this base starts for your defense and if you want to play at high levels at really hard like difficulties and corruption levels you need at least these stats so it will be basic defense bench benchmarks and you want to start with crit avoidance and crit damage reduction basically you need to cap uh, crit avoidance to 100 percent or you will be one shotted in the later stages of the game and you want all resistances to be at least 75 percent then you want to have health up to like 2k range from 2 to 4k and then you can finish with some armor endurance if you got high HP, of course, you want Endurance. If you play in Ward instead of HP, then probably go with Ward. And basically finish with some dodge rating and stuff for Rogue. Block percent and effectiveness for other classes who are using Shield. But we don't care too much. So we need to find out, first of all, like our basic items that can increase our damage a little bit more. But keeping in mind all our resistances so just by playing this class we already got fire resistance at 35 percent necrotic resistance will be around like 91 percent and poison resistance a little bit so we almost got like pretty nice resistances already and instead of build planner you want to go to resource on this site and go to item and you will be here now you can like enter everything you want for example you want something that will give you like levels of your ability. You just enter chaos bolts over here and press enter and you will see everything that can like work with chaos bolts. 
In reality, there's two FXs and uh, they will work only on helmet. And that's where to start. Go to helmets, you will see all helmets over here. There will be a lot of them, so make sure to just write your class instantly. Write at least Acolyte. It's not working for some reason, but that's fine. You can enter something like not over here, for example. You can go like to your helmets into your build planner and yeah over here you will see all helmets that will work only for your class and while you can enter here something like i want mana regeneration let's go there will be just basic helmets so they will work they will definitely work mana regeneration helmets increase your mana regeneration you will drop affixes that will increase level of your awesome and best skill but instead i went to disabling basic and i just uh, read through all this stuff to find out is there any stuff that can be useful you can just read or you can write here for example other good affixes like necrotic damage and here we are we are left with basically like five helmets and they mostly not working for our build well this awesome helmet Isadora Revenge is set helmet that will give me stun avoidance, health, necrotic penetration, and also if we build full set, we gain chance to apply damped on the hit with necrotic spells and necrotic penetration. And also mana efficiency with necrotic spells. It was no brainer and I'm really excited. So I'm pressing save over here and now we got our set. To find like other set items, just click on them and you will find out that there's belt and gloves. So we're going into belt, writing Isadora, getting this belt, getting to gloves, again Isadora and getting these gloves too. Now we got our character. So set items can be applied uh, with any suffixes, so we don't need to stress around those. And then again, back to item selection, write what you want. For example, you want mana regeneration, go and write mana regeneration. And now we got already our helmet, so we can close this stuff. Let's see body armor. There's no body armor, so that is good, no gloves. And here we are, we found a unique Jula Stardell. We're getting more mana, mana regeneration, mana spent gained as ward, so a little bit of protection, increasing spell damage, everything we need basically. And we see where to farm it in Temporal Sanctum Dungeon, dropped from Bossway. So going into our items and instantly getting it on us. But now we need to pick up our affixes. And that's why it's nice to play game before you're actually making build yourself, because now you will know what affixes to find on what gear. On rings you can definitely get uh, just intelligence and necrotic damage or spell damage, something like this. It will be prefix, for suffix, so they are more protective stuff. We can go with health and some resistance or critical strike avoidance. I recommend going with critical strike avoidance, of course. We will get our resistance up and going later. For second ring, we just go in here and write in mana regeneration, get in sapphire ring with critical strike avoidance. With necrotic damage, we can go with spell damage over here just to get the suffixes in our item planner. And as amulet, we're going with bone amulet for physical and necrotic resistance. Or we can definitely go with best in slot amulet because we get low resistances right now and we get set items. It will be hard to go with everything. We will probably try to target farm omnis. To target farm omnis, you need to fight shades of Urbus at least on 200 corruption level. So it's hard to get, but if you get this amulet, it's a really powerful one. And we kind of get in almost with all our resistances already. Also on amulet, you can go with necrotic penetration, really powerful stuff. And we kind of finishing our build, almost. I decided to go with the woven flesh. It will give me 100% critical strike avoidance, so we can change suffixes on our rings. Instead of critical strike avoidance, we get in resistances. So it will be void resistance for one ring and poison resistance for second ring. Now we kind of fixed all resistances. We got critical strike avoidance. Now we need some more damage. Let's find our weapon. And we can go here with some easy choice like temple stuff to gain, gain more mana region, reduce mana cost and increase spell damage, gain more mana and mana region as prefix, necrotic damage as prefix number two. And for suffix we can go with necrotic penetration and basically anything we will get, maybe health on kill, it will work. So it's two-handed weapon, we don't need a shield right now. 
And now let's see what problems do we have. We got pretty low health right now. We can fix it with idols, but it will come later. For now, let's get boots. And right now, most of the time, if you're going like me and you don't know what boots you need and you've not found any unique inside boots, just go bottom over here and pick whatever boots you think is cool. Because I covered all resistances already, we can go with Citadel boots. It's high level boots and we just don't care about any other boots we will find before it, but it will give me not only movement speed and armor, but also reduce bonus damage taken from critical strikes. So why not to have it? Also, some stuff like boots got hybrid health. It's really powerful one. It's giving you percentage health and like flat health. So we kind of fixing it. I'm checking my armor. It's already 100, 1000, so <laughs> it's more than enough. Prefixes, we're going with intelligence over here. It's not possible, of course, in game to get like all this like super ideal stuff. So don't worry, don't worry if you're not getting exactly these items. You need to have at least main affixes over here and main suffixes. And our idol, what do we have here? So any good, unique or set stuff. We just change, check in again with mana regeneration and necrotic stuff. And it's like pretty weird stuff over here. Let's <laughs> just forget it. So we will stop on defiled bones probably to just increase spell damage. Also, it will be like super late game stuff, but we can get a chance to apply frailty on heat, increase our casting speed and also necrotic damage. So all equipment is done. Now it's time for idols and for idols again, you're going over here, picking your idol size and you need to press on the right square over here. Not all squares will have every idol. So I like to press over here at first to check two on two idol. Is it good? Do it have like any good affixes? It's not. So I don't care about it. Now let's find out do we need any like big idols like this. You just click on it and see what affixes you can have. Critical strike chance, not for our build. Huge idol, I don't like it. There's no cool stuff in here. Maybe this one. And big idols is not for my build. So we check in one on three over here. <laughs> and yeah, by the way, here we are. Mana efficiency with just flame. Just flame build could be really cool and interesting. Go and write in comments, do you want to see it? But other like prefixes is not really cool. Besides big health bonus. So possibly I will get large idol with health and mark for death chance. Pretty nice one. And I will find out what and how I will do it in the game. But health will be like most important part for me. And maybe this grand idol with chance to apply damped on heat or damage over time will be nice addition to like my build. Also, we can have increased cooldown rec recovery for transplant. And basically right now I'm picking idols that possibly will work for my build and finishing with basic stout idols that will have percentage of health and maybe some resistances or just health. And this finalize our build. So in the end we will have around like 2k HP, even more with full resistances, critical strike avoidance, and we can go into different stuff. And here we are, we will see EHP against different damage types, against hit, against dot damage, against one shot. And basically we got around 3k HP. It's pretty not bad. And now only one thing left, pressing save and share over here to save your build. And also exporting your loot filter. When you're going into loot filter, go and uh, make sure it's regular over here. Spot Necroman, Necro Warlock, something like this. Copy to clipboard or save to file. And here you are. <laughs> Link to the build is ready. It will be in the description. And now you definitely can make build yourself. But make sure to watch other cool videos on the screen right now for good builds to get some inspiration. And see you in the next videos.